Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah to the Most High God, our King. The Lord Jesus Christ on the last day of June 2016. And this is the word for today. This is for today. And I'm telling you, it's going to be for tomorrow too. And I'm telling you, the word of the Lord is relevant for every day. And we need to pay attention to what the word says. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you today and thank you for this word that you have given. This word that you have preserved for us, Lord, so that we do not be ignorant of the devil's devices, but that we know you, Lord. Hallelujah. And that we hear you say at the very end, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of thy Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that you penetrate our hearts and that you erase Erase out of our minds, Lord, every doctrine of man. And that you would replace that with your doctrine, your teaching, your way, O oh God. Hallelujah. And that we would keep our focus and our attention and our affection upon you, Lord Jesus, at the Father's right hand. Father, we thank you for sending your Son to die for us. To destroy the works of the devil and the power of sin, the power of death in the grave. Hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you. We worship you. You have the keys of death. Hallelujah. You have the keys of hell. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you. We praise you in your glorified body. In your resurrected, glorified body. Hallelujah. And Lord Jesus, we are your body today. We are the body of Christ in the earth. We are your people. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you. Praise you. Praise you. We worship you today. Seal this word in our heart today. Open our hearts to receive your truth. And receive the life contained therein. That your life would flow out of us as rivers of living water today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To one, the savor of life. The other, to the savor of death, Lord. Because they don't receive. Because they close their hearts and their minds to the truth. Oh God, we pray that everyone that hears this will have a heart to receive. To believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to be strengthened in the inner man. Knowing today that we are your temple, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Crush the devil. Throw him under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, glory to the king today. I'm telling you right now, we are in tumultuous times, man. We are, <laughs> this world is really just manifesting more of the wickedness that's there more and more. As we get closer to the return of Christ, and no one knows the day or the hour, we know we're in the season for sure. Uh, it's just going to manifest more and more, that man of sin. That's today's message, the man, quote, the man, end quote, of sin, okay? Now, I've taught this message before and preached it, Sharon and I both. There are others who maybe haven't heard it before, and also there's new revelation God is giving. I mean, every time we preach, every time we come to this microphone and give the word, the Lord is able to draw out and to give more revelation from his word. So today we expect that to be, because God is faithful. God is faithful. See, we have to, as, as believers today, we profess the name of Jesus. We believe in his word. We say we believe this scripture. Hallelujah. We don't say uh, only in the original autographs. This is what people are saying today. All the denominations, when you go to their websites, you go to their websites on the internet, you look at their uh, their terms of belief, you know, their their uh, what they believe, okay? They have a, a deal on there, you know, what we believe. And then you go there and read it. And they all believe in the scripture, in the original autographs, okay? But saints, we need to know this today, that there are no original autographs anymore, okay? So see, the devil has deceived people into saying, in the original autographs. 
There are none. Okay. That scroll that Isaiah rolled out, okay, or his scribe, he had a scribe that rolled out the scroll, and Isaiah said, start writing, son, and, and he started writing on that scroll. That scroll is nowhere around. See? See, it comes by faith. We believe the word of God by faith. We believe it's his word. We know it is. We see it in our life. We see the word of God being fulfilled in our own experience and in our own life today. And if there's one doubt in our heart about the word of the Lord, we are in trouble, okay? When you look at the life of Vanya, Vanya didn't uh, say, oh, you know, in his Russian language or Moldavian or whatever uh, language Bible he read, you know, he didn't, he didn't have any question that it was the word of God. He knew it was the word of God. And he stood upon that word all the way to the very end of his precious life. Hallelujah. When the KGB killed him, trying to get him to recant Jesus, but he wouldn't recant because Jesus was in him fighting the battle. Hallelujah. And today we have this teaching going around about the Antichrist, this, this, this man of sin, this one person. And everybody's got their focus looking for one person. But that's not what the scripture teaches. Now we know from the scripture there was Nebuchadnezzar, okay? He was an antichrist. He exalted himself above God. All right? And we know today in this earth, see? Okay, after Nebuchadnezzar, then you have the Caesars. You have Alexander the Great. You have all these world rulers who exalted themselves above the God of heaven. And today, in the, in the earth today, you have kings, you have presidents, you have prime ministers, you have religious leaders, the Pope of Rome, and all these people exalt their self against and above God. You have this, I mean, it is so wicked. The, you know, the Catholic Church teaches that they, they say what the Bible means. Not the Bible. Not the, not the Lord God Almighty of the Scripture. He doesn't say what it means. The Catholic Church tells you what it means. See, that is Antichrist. That's against Jesus Christ. See, when the sword of truth comes in from the word of God, from the Holy Scripture, the King James Version, if you're in the English language, that, that is the scripture, okay? And, and, and the Holy Word comes in, and, and it cuts you so. It divides asunder between the joint and the marrow and the soul and spirit, and in you go, oh. I don't. I just don't believe that. Uh, is that in the original auto? Is there, there's in original autograph, or you know, we have some kind of excuse not to let the word come in. It's because of the old nature. We love the way we're doing it. We don't want to follow the word. See, the word of the Lord is true, saints. And right here in Second Thessalonians chapter two, Paul said. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken, don't be agitated, in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And then he says here, now listen. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, this is what we're talking about today. Listen to this. Okay. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin... Be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Boy, I tell you. Or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, I'm going to look in here right here in the handheld version. I was reading from my e-sword. 
And Paul is, it, you know, this is such a powerful word. Now listen again. Let no man deceive you. When I say the word man, what do you think of? You think of a, of, of a male person, a man, okay? And this word here, it means anything at all. It could mean the grass, the trees, a house, uh, a computer, uh, a television, uh, a man, a woman, a child, anything at all. Let nothing, don't let anything at all in this created universe deceive you, okay? Don't let anything from the spiritual realm, okay, the dark side deceive you, all right? By any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. This is a falling away from the faith. Okay? The faith once delivered unto the saints. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So right here you have two, two words here. Same word. Man, let no man, and then and that man of sin. Be revealed. And the second man there is 444. It's anthropos. It means humanity. Humanity. Okay? It doesn't mean an individual male like 435. Okay? This is 444 in the Strongs. The reason it was written in the Greek language is, I mean, these words mean different things. Okay? In the English language, which is the hardest language to learn. It's the only language, I believe, on the face of the earth that has 25 or 30 or 100 different versions of the Holy Scripture in the English language. But I'm here to tell you today that the King James Version Bible is the most accurate. It is the, ac it is the accurate Bible. The King James Version. Okay, and this word right here, <coughs> man is 444 in the Strong's, and it means humanity. Okay, now let's finish reading this. This, this son of perdition, this man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? And they say that this is an individual person that they're looking for who is the Antichrist. Yet, the scripture teaches us that John said, right there in 1 John chapter 2, that there are many antichrists. Okay? Many antichrists. You see, anything and everything that is in opposition to Christ Jesus, the living God in the flesh, at the Father's right hand, anything in opposition to him is antichrist. Are you in opposition to the Lord Jesus today? Are you exalting your flesh today and being in opposition to him and what he wants to do? Then you are Antichrist. And you say, I'm not the Antichrist. I didn't say you were the Antichrist. I said you are Antichrist. See, the flesh of us, the old nature of us, is, is opposed to Christ. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, James chapter 4. See, the carnal man, the old nature man, the carnal mind cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. And if we walk by the flesh, we're walking in carnality, see, we're in hostility to God. And that's Antichrist, that's going against Christ. Oh, praise God. And look here. And, they, and they, here's another thing they teach in verse 4 here. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, how much can I give you right here? Look at this. Who opposeth and exalteth himself. Himself. What do we think of? 
we think of a man himself, okay? But it means to raise oneself over, that is, to become haughty, exalt self, be exalted above measure. You don't, you notice that the word male is not in there, right? This is to raise oneself over. Men can do this, women can do this, children can do this, okay? To become haughty, exalt self, be exalted above measure. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, he there, you think of a man. See, he. Look what it means. It's the, the reflexive pronoun self. Self. Okay. Used alone or in the compound of 1438 of the third person and with the proper personal pronoun of other persons. Her. It. Itself. One. One. The other, mine, mine own. Okay? You see, it doesn't just mean a man. Okay? He. Okay? It means he or she or anyone at all. See? Look. As God. See, people today, they really think they are God in this world. And Christians who say, I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. I believe the word of God, they say. And then they'll say in the original autographs. And what they're doing when they say that is, I really don't believe in the word of God. There's so much doubt on I don't know if that's really what God means right there. When he says, thou shalt not commit adultery. What does he really mean by that? I don't know. Let's just black that out. And they're their own God. I'm telling you right now. Sitteth in the temple of God. Now, this word temple, they say, oh, there's going to be a third temple rebuilt in Jerusalem, and, and then the Antichrist is going to come in, and he's going to sit there in, inside the temple, and he's, you know. Well, listen, this already happened before. Antiochus Epiphanes did this in about the year 146 or so B.C. He went into the temple there in Jerusalem. He sacrificed a pig on the altar. He set himself up as God. I'm telling you, that man was eating of worms. I'm telling you right now, they ain't, this is not going to happen today. See, the temple today is people. People. The Word of God teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I mean chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that we are the temple of God. And you see the word temple there. It's the same word that that is recorded in John chapter 2 when Jesus said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up again. And Jesus said, As the Father sent me, so send I you. Jesus said he was the temple. Hallelujah. And he is the temple. And we are the temple of the Lord as well. Hallelujah. And you have this evil, vile, wicked, demonic spirit out in the world today. The selfish, prideful, haughty, adulterous, fornication, everything else. All this wickedness setting itself up in people. And they think we can do whatever we want to do. And we don't have to pay attention to God. And we don't have to do what, what the true and living God says. We don't have to worry about his principles. Because we're going to create our own principles. We're going to do whatever we want to do. And I'm telling you right now, there is no, you could take every single King James Version Bible on the face of this earth. You could take every Chinese Bible, every Russian Bible, every Italian Bible. You could take every Latin Bible. You could take all the Bibles on the face of the earth and burn every one of them. And the Word of God is still true and will still stand. And all the principles therein will come to fruition. You cannot stop the Word of the Lord. This world thinks they can. They think they're going to stop God's word. They think that they're trying to change it right now. But I'm telling you right now, God says he will have a remnant. He will have a remnant who stand on his word and believe his word and love his word. Hallelujah. And today we are that remnant. 
you listening, you, you are the remnant. If you believe, hallelujah, and you're a believer. <coughs> now I'm telling you right now, listen to verse 5. It says, hallelujah, I turn, turn the page here. Paul says to the Thessalonians, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Paul said, I told you these things. I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Now let me go back to verse 6. And ye know what withholdeth. Okay. Let's go here. I want to look at it in the Strong's again. See. Now remember, that word, he, is 846. Hallelujah. In the Strong's. And ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Now that's 846 again. See. Same, same word. It's, it's he or she. See, it's self. Hallelujah. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's already working, said Paul. Right there in the first century. The mystery of iniquity. Mystery there is mysterion, to shut the mouth. Okay? It's like you can't even, you can't even speak about it. It's like, it's too deep. All right? Hallelujah. For the mystery of iniquity, okay, iniquity, e illegality, okay, violation of law, wickedness, iniquity, transgression, the law, unrighteousness. Do you see that out in the world today? Hmm. Hmm. You see it? Can you see it out in the world? Unrighteousness. Can you see wickedness in the world? Is it working today? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Oh, hallelujah. And then that shall that wicked be revealed. What's that word wicked mean? That wicked. Lawless. Not subject to law. The Jewish law. Do you know that the Jews today over in Israel... Those people that are calling themselves God's people, they don't use the Torah. You know, that's not their book. Their book is the Talmud and the Kabbalah, okay, which are both witchcraft books, okay. They use the Babylonian Talmud. That's their book, okay. Not, not the Torah. Now, I'm not saying every Jew is like that. There are some Jews who read the Torah and follow the principles laid down there. But the, the leaders and those who have the money and the power, who have cast this big witchcraft spell over the whole earth, see, they use the Talmud, see, not subject to the law, the Jewish law. Wicked, without law, see, without law. You notice how the politicians, the presidents, and all these people, they can murder, they can kill, they can do all sorts of wickedness with no repercussion from anyone else. No repercussion from anyone else. But see, they forget. They believe they are doing something to effect that there is no God in heaven who is going to judge them. And they are totally, completely deceived because they are in bed with the devil. And then shall that wicked be revealed. See, 601, that is apocalypto, hallelujah, to take off the cover, disclose, reveal. We see it happening right now, that the wicked is being revealed. Whom the Lord, hallelujah, our king, hallelujah, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Oh, hallelujah. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. See. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. See. Listen. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. 
And I'm going to read this again. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. See? The devil is coming. Hallelujah. Okay? The devil, it says here, is coming. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. That's who he's coming in. See? That's what it says. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. People that do not love the truth and believe the truth of God's word that he has revealed to mankind and preserved all these centuries from the beginning until now. God has preserved his word. Noah wrote down the account, and Abraham wrote down the account, and Isaac wrote down, and Jacob wrote down, and Joseph wrote down, and Moses wrote down, and Joshua wrote down, and all these men of God wrote the history and the workings of Jehovah. And these are all preserved for us today, that we do not be deceived by wicked men, false teachers, false prophets out in this world today. If people are deceived, it is because they want to be deceived. You see, I had a big question about all these teachings about end times. When I came back to the Lord in 94, and I said, Lord, what is all this? I mean, here you got all these camps. You got the pre-tribbers, the, pre the mid-tribbers, and the post-tribbers. And all these different camps. I mean, and even and even you have these Jehovah's Witnesses over here, and then the nominal Christians over here, and you have the Christian scientists over there, and then you have all these different Christian Christianity all over. Okay? And they all disagree on certain things, all of them, but they all believe in the thousand year literal reign of Christ on earth, you know. And I, so that that is stuck in my mind. I'm like, God, how can there be such division and such wickedness, such wickedness to make people divide when your word clearly says what it says? Lord, show me what the truth is. And he just told me, he said, you believe my word. He said, you start studying out the word. So I had a big, giant Strong's Concordance and began to just search the word and look up words. And, and I'll tell you, God just began to reveal to me and to show me that almost 90% of what people are teaching about end times is just not there. It's just not in the Word, okay? It's just not in the Word. See, the Scripture says Jesus is coming back. Even as he went up, he's going to come back and set his feet on the Mount of Olives. Oh, hallelujah. And... In the interim time, we are to be witnesses unto him. This is what the scripture teaches. See, The scripture doesn't teach us we're to be prophecy experts and we're to be all these different things that people are being out there. We're to be news reporters for the Lord, you know. It doesn't say that. It says we're, we're to be witnesses unto him of his great and awesome virtue, power. Destroying all the works of the devil. Hallelujah. But see, people want to have their own little thing. People want to be exalted. So here comes the devil. See? And this 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 whole spirit of Antichrist, this whole spirit, the son of perdition, and all this stuff that is against Christ, whose coming is after the working of Satan. See, it's Satan doing all this 
through the flesh, through the old nature of man, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Mm -hmm. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Because they received not the love of the truth. That's agape of the truth. That they might be saved. They received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. In verse 11. And for this cause, because of this, God shall send them strong delusion. Who? God shall send them strong delusion. Delusion, that they should believe a lie, the lie, in the original Greek, the lie, the lie, that you can be God. That they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. <coughs> there are literally millions Millions of Christians today who have pleasure in unrighteousness. They go to the movies and see these filthy movies that are produced by filthy, witchcraft-laden, and filled Hollywood. Okay? That is unrighteousness, saints. It is unrighteousness. It really is. And God says, don't do that. You know, it says in the scripture in Ephesians chapter 5, it is a shame to even speak of those things which the wicked do in secret. It's a shame for a believer to speak of those things, Paul said. But today, do Christians believe that word? No, maybe in the original autograph, it really didn't say that, you see. But you see multitudes of people in this earth today, especially on YouTube, okay, and, and they're all, and they say they believe in Jesus, and, and I'm not saying they're not believers. I'm saying they're in error when all they're doing is, is bringing people's focus to the Antichrist. Bringing people's focus, focusing in on one man. And you'll see, you know, videos, and maybe this person's the Antichrist. Let me tell you all about him, you know. He does this wickedness and that wickedness and blah, 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 and all this, and all the wickedness that he does, and, oh, he could be the Antichrist. Or maybe this person's the Antichrist. Or maybe that person's the Antichrist. And everything they're doing, okay, is against Christ because they're not drawing people into the heart of Christ. See, they're not telling people you need to take up your cross daily and follow Jesus Christ. You need to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him. You need to be on the narrow way. Otherwise, otherwise you're on the broad way. And all those on the broad way are headed to damnation, okay? And Jesus is going to say to his multitudes, depart from me. I never knew you. See? I never knew you. How many people, we don't, we couldn't tell you how many people we have befriended on the internet. And when they find out we're not budging from the, from the truth of God's word, all right, we're not going to budge from that. And we're going to speak the truth to them. We're going to speak the truth to you. We're not budging from the truth of God's word to compromise so that we can be somebody's friend. Okay. Or get someone's support or whatever. We're not going to compromise the truth of God's word. So they depart. And they start coming against you in the spirit. You can feel it. But I'm telling you right now, God always happens to have a, a battling ram. and He can just bust right through them demonic forces. Hallelujah. And throw them down. Because the word of God is his battle axe. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says we are his battle axe. Oh, praise God. He says he gives us sharp teeth. Hallelujah. To thresh. To thresh the wheat, okay? And we are the wheat. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's what his word does. Now, we see this word, the man of sin, right here, okay? In Second Thessalonians, hallelujah, chapter 2, verse 3. And that man, that's 444. Now, think about it. It's anthropos. It means humanity. Now, when you go over to Revelation 13, and you look in Revelation 13, and you see this, this beast, okay? And this, I'm, really, the Lord is bringing forth this teaching today because he wants 
everyone. He wants us all to understand and to remember it's not just an individual person, okay? It's not. It is the collective mass of people in this earth, okay, who are in opposition to Jesus Christ. They are Antichrist. And so many of them are in, quote, the Christian religion, religion of man, the box that men build and call it after Jesus' name, but yet the whole thing is about controlling people and getting into their pocketbook and living a cush life, okay? It's not about denying yourself, taking up your cross, and walking with the Lord and witnessing for Him. And it's Antichrist. It's all about our program. It's all about our thing. It's all about what we're doing. And the Lord says no to that. See, the man of sin. Think about it. See, today in this earth you have the true remnant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are truly born anew from heaven. By the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, by the faith and the operation of God through the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and the precious blood of Jesus, we have a new spirit. We are born anew and filled with the Spirit of God. We are the body of Christ in the earth, hallelujah. And then you have another body in the earth, and it's the body of sin, the body of the devil, the man of sin, mankind, anthropos. See, and look what it says here in, in Revelation chapter 13. Hallelujah. Let me just read this. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This is people. The sea speaks of people. Having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his head, his heads, the name of blasphemy. All these blasphemous works people are doing today. And the beast <coughs> which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now, where do we see that in the scripture in Daniel chapter 7? Okay. You have the lion with eagle's wings. The wings are plucked, made to stand on his feet as a man, and, and a man's heart was given. And the, and the heart is what? Deceitful and desperately wicked. Above all things, who can know it? Says the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 9. And then you, you have the bear beast. Okay. Then you have the leopard beast. Right there in Daniel 7. Then you have the fourth beast. And the fourth beast is a combination of those first three beasts. See. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Oh, people think they're so powerful today, oh, on this earth. Oh, yeah, they think they're powerful. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded, unto, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Oh, Hollywood's had a heyday with that, let me tell you. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? And who, who is able to make war with him? And there was given, I wrote in here, the precious blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. And them that dwell in heaven. See, to blaspheme God's name and his tabernacle. Who's the tabernacle today? We are the tabernacle. And them that dwell in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. You ever felt overcome? By the hordes of demonic forces and the false people who, false Christians. We have. We've felt that before. But I'm telling you, God always comes in and rises up in us, hallelujah, and gives us boldness to stand, hallelujah, because he says, I am able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before my throne, saith the Lord, hallelujah. 
And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Look at verse 8 now. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Oh yeah, they're going to worship him. See? Do you see people out there today worshiping him? Worshiping him, that man of sin, worshiping their self? Oh, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You have an ear today? Then hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to take up arms against the new world order? You're going to go start killing people when they come down your driveway for a piece of bread? Huh? That's how you're going to die, saith the Lord. Oh, it's so sad how people are just planning and planning and planning to murder out in this world. It's terrible. And I beheld another beast. Look at verse 11. begins another part of the chapter. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Oh man, I tell you. This is that. This is like that. Just the, the false humility in the religious systems of the world. I mean, it's just so evil. I'm telling you. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And causeth the earth. And them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Oh man, I tell you. And they have the technology to do this today. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. <clears throat> in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now let's talk about that. It's important. And I'm going to tell you why. <coughs> Because the word beast there, it means just an unruly animal. It means the flesh. Let me show you right here. I'll look it up in the Webster's Dictionary. And it's, it's powerful. I looked this. I used to have a big, giant, uh, unabridged Webster's Dictionary. It was real thick. It was about six inches thick. And I looked up the word beast one day. And I'm going to tell you right now, it blew my mind when I read the definition of the word beast. Okay? Because when we see this word beast, what do we think of? We think of the devil, okay? Or we think of this, the Antichrist, he's the beast, you know? And we think of these things, all right? Now look at this. I'm going to show you this. Praise the Lord. you got to believe the word today, I'm telling you. It's vitally important. Beast. This is the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Okay, no Webster. It says... Any four-footed animal which may be used for labor, food, or sport, distinguished from fowls, insects, fishes, and man, as beast of burden, beast of the chase, beast of the forest. It is usually applied to large animals. Okay. Number two, opposed to man. It signifies any irrational animal, as in the phrase man and beast, so wild beast. Number three, figuratively, a brutal man, a person rude coarse, filthy, or acting in a manner unworthy of a rational creature. Oh, do we see that on the world today? Do we see that on television today? Do we see it in the movies today? I mean, can you believe people actually go to the movies so they can see people get shot and killed and their brains blown out everywhere and all this wickedness and filth? That they're, they're doing in Hollywood and have been for a long, long, long time. Almost a hundred years. 
programming people's minds with this image of the beast, with all this filth and all this rudeness, and the coarse joking and the filthy mouths. And people worship that stuff. And it's evil. Look at it says here. And he had power to give life under the image of the beast. I remember when I was a kid. Let me tell you this. When I was a kid, I used to we used to watch TV. We had a black and white TV. And the Lucy show, we watched I Love Lucy. Okay. Everybody loved Lucy. All right. In the bedroom, they always had two beds. In the in the bedroom of the parents. They always had two beds. But every time I would go to my friend's house, I would and in my own house, in my parents' bedroom, there was only one bed. Okay? And everybody else's house only had one bed. But on in the and, and on television they had two beds. See? They were programming people in the fifties to separate husband and wife. To separate. And it worked. See? And, and they made this image of what you know, single beds. And it that's it's irrational. It's stupid. It was absolutely programming the people. Look back on it, think about it. And all of Hollywood, the whole thing, see, we know what Hollywood, okay, it's it's a witchcraft spell. It's what it is. And people are worshiping the fallen man. They're out there worshiping fallen man. You know, and you, you hear a lot of talk about the homosexuals today. And how wicked and how evil and all this other stuff. Why are they like that? Because they have rejected the creator. See? It's not homosexuality that sends a person to hell. It's unbelief that sends a person to hell. People refuse to believe the truth of God. The truth of his word. And when a person crosses the line in their unbelief, God turns them over to a reprobate mind. To do that which is unseemly. That's what the word says. I'm telling you right now, look, look at verse 15. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. See, we are opposed to all that wickedness of Hollywood. Okay? But we know today you got to be politically correct. You got to be a compromiser. You got to compromise the truth of God's word in order to get along in this society. But I'm telling you right now, those who are really in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to compromise the truth of God's word. We love not our life even unto the death. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell. Oh, wait a minute. There's that word man again. Let's look that up. <coughs> How powerful this is. Verse 17. Oh, praise God. And that no man, nothing, nothing at all, okay, not anything, might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And look at verse 18, right here. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. 444, Anthropos. It's the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score, and six. Okay? Six is the number for man. And then six. Six. Man, and then six. Fallen man. And then fallen again. I mean fallen again. And you can see that too. Man fell in the garden. Man, then he fell in the garden. Everyone's born into this world, fallen. And then they reject Jesus and they fall again. They reject him. Because see, the Holy Spirit's been poured out upon all flesh, it says in Acts chapter 2. And people reject the Holy Spirit. They reject the wooing of the Father. 
And when they keep doing that and keep doing that, and the Lord knows the time, he blots their name out of the book that's written, turns them over to a reprobate mind. But not all of them go into homosexuality. Not all of them go into the lesbianism. Okay, but what do they go into? Let's look at it right here in Romans chapter 8. I mean chapter 1. It says it right here and you can see it. See, because they, people love to preach about, you know, and against homosexuals. And they like to preach about it against all this stuff. But I'm telling you right now, God loves people. And God knows there are people who are who are homosexuals today who are deceived and, and they have not crossed the line and they're in there, they're deceived, okay? And, and he can save them if they turn to him with a broken and contrite heart, repent of their sin and come back to him. But there are so many who are who are absolutely against Jesus Christ and hate him with a passion and God has turned them over. Now listen, but there are many, like I said, who have been turned over, but they're not in the homosexual lifestyle, okay? Listen to this. Verse 28 of Romans chapter 1, because a lot of preachers like to read Romans chapter 1, and they just zero in on this one sin, one sin of homosexuality. But listen to verse 28 through 32. It says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, is humanity today liking to retain God in their knowledge and the things of God? God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. Okay? It's not convenient to worship the devil. It's not convenient to worship the creature rather than the creator. It's not convenient, okay, to be a homosexual. It's not convenient to be an adulterer. It's not convenient to be a thief and a robber. It's not convenient to be a man full of pride and arrogance, okay? It's not convenient to be like the world, like the flesh, and like the devil. It's not convenient, okay? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, I'm telling you right now, that's the man of sin right there. Look at that. And we see it out in this world. You can't help but see it out in the world. But I'm telling you right now, God says to us, his children, he says, you don't have to focus on that. Oh, hallelujah. God says, you can turn your gaze to me 24-7. God says, you can focus on me. You can love me. You can open up your hearts and receive me more fully, more fully, more fully every day hallelujah god says you can trust in me i am jehovah i will protect you under the shadow of my wings hallelujah our god is the holy god he's the righteous god this man of sin okay this humanity of sin this whole world in chaos in confusion in wickedness it's just going to get worse as we get closer to the end and the Lord says today to all of us, are you standing on the rock? Have you allowed me to put you in the cleft of the rock while my glory passes by? Oh, hallelujah. God says, stand upon the rock, Christ Jesus. The Father says, fall upon the rock and be broken each day. Lest the rock fall on you and grind you to powder. If you're hearing this broadcast today and you don't know the Lord Jesus, let me tell you something. He wants you to know him. He wants you to be his child. He wants to grow you up into a son of God. Hallelujah. Because that's what the Bible says. We are sons of God. We are children of the Father. Hallelujah. We are brothers and sisters of Christ. Hallelujah. 
you just repent of your sins and believe the gospel today. You cry out to Jesus to save you. He is real. He has risen from the dead. He is seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is coming again in glory to judge the quick and the dead. Hallelujah. There is so much, saints, about end time teaching. And, <coughs> pardon me, sometimes I don't, I don't believe I touch on it enough. But let me tell you something. Sometimes it's hard to bring it forth. It has to be the Lord leading and guiding. When you're, when you're witnessing for the Lord, be led of the Lord. See? Like, for instance, maybe you're going to go visit someone today and you, you're, you're thinking what you're going to say to that person. Don't do that. Don't do that. Think about God. Think about His Word. Read His Word. Read some Psalms. And just let the Lord Jesus' words be true in your life where he says, In that hour my Father will give you what to say. Hallelujah. And you go to visit someone, and then in that hour you open your mouth and the words come out. Hallelujah. And always pray for the people you're going to be talking to that God will have their hearts ready to receive the word of truth. Hallelujah. If you don't know the Lord, like I said, you come to Jesus today. He wants to save you. He loves you so much. He died for you. He died for the sin of all mankind. That's what it says in 1 John chapter 2. He's the propitiation for our sins. And not only our sins, John said, but the sin of the whole world. So his blood is effectual. But men hate Jesus. It's so sad that people hate the Lord Jesus Christ. Even people who say they love him, when you start talking to them and you find out they don't really love Jesus because they hate his word. They prove they don't love him when they reject the word, when they damn the word, when they cast doubt on the word. It proves they don't really love the Lord. And it's sad, so sad. So know this, the man of sin is all this whole body of people in this earth today who reject the Lord Jesus, whether they're Christians, Muslims, don't matter, Catholics, Baptists, it don't matter. If they're rejecting the word of the Lord, or and they're claiming to know more than the word, they're claiming to say, oh, I'm, I'm over the word, I don't, and in the original autograph, you know, I really don't have to believe that part of the word, or this part of the word, you know, this is, this is lifting oneself up in haughtiness. See, they're, they're the man of sin. Now, one thing I want to leave you with this before I pray. I want to say this. We believe in our house that there will be a world ruler come on the scene. And he's going to try to rule all this evil. <laughs> okay. But I'm telling you right now, the Lord God Almighty, his word is true. And he says in Isaiah chapter 34 that he is going to destroy. He says in there, he hath destroyed all the armies of the earth. He hath done it. And the Lord says in there, he says he has indignation on all the armies of the earth. And he's, he hath destroyed them. He hath utterly destroyed them. So you don't want to be in the camp of this world, in the camp of the devil, when all this stuff breaks out big time. I mean full blown all around the earth. Because it's already happening over in the Middle East and, and in, in other places. It's happening in Africa. When it breaks out in America and in the Western nations, I'm telling you, you want to be in Christ Jesus, the risen Savior. You want to be in Him. He is the ark of safety. And He puts His angels in charge around us. He protects us. He keeps us. Hallelujah. And if, and if He knows we need to go through a certain amount of suffering, He allows that in order to perfect us, to strengthen us, to break us. To break us so that the oil can flow out. The living oil. Hallelujah. Living water. Our God's a holy God. He knows what he's doing. So just believe his word today. Father, I thank you for this word. Seal it to our hearts. Touch those, Lord, who have heard it. Oh, God, I pray that we would be mindful of you, Lord. That we know that we know that we know. And that we experience more 
of your voice, Lord, speaking to us today. Let us hear your voice in our inner being, O God, in the Spirit, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. If we turn to the right or to the left, we will hear a voice behind us, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. Speak to us, Father, today in that still, small voice, as you do every day, Lord. Give us clear understanding, Father. Help us all, Lord, your body to humble ourselves before you, Lord. Fall upon the rock and be broken. For you know better than us, Lord. You know better than us. Your thoughts are higher than the heavens are above the earth. Higher than our thoughts, Lord. Let us have a clear understanding, Lord, of what we need to see and understand, Father. Let us no longer be deceived by the evil one. Let us no longer be deceived by man. Let us no longer be deceived by messages out there on YouTube or wherever they're at, Lord. Don't let us be deceived by any of this. Don't let us be uh, even able to be enticed by all these movements out there, Lord. But keep us ever in the straight and narrow way, Father. In your word. In prayer fasting and in loving you God and in praising and worshiping you and holding up each other's arms oh father let it be so and crush the devil and throw him under our feet in Jesus name amen hallelujah the Lord bless you and keep you make his holy face to shine upon you the Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace the Lord be gracious unto you today I put his name upon you his authority his character his name be upon your life today. Be enveloped, hallelujah, covered under his mighty wings as you go forward in his name today, stomping on the devil's head in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. God bless you all. Hallelujah.